Yeah. So most people know B. Traven as author of uh, Treasure of the Sierra Madre. What prompted your your journey, your search, which in the book finds you very quickly in Mexico and takes you all the way to getting so close as to as to trying on B. Traven's some of his wardrobe even. Yes, yes. So I was reading, I was in New York City, I was reading the books of, of B. Traven, uh, who, who I knew very little about his life, but he was a, a German writer who uh, was arrested in, in Germany for his political activities. He was in jail, he was sentenced to be executed, he escaped, he got to Mexico. Uh, B. Traven was the pseudonym that he took when he got to Mexico. He started writing and then sending books uh, back to Germany. He didn't tell anybody in, in Germany that he'd had this previous identity as a writer there. Uh, he claimed to be an American and he was born in... Uh, he had different stories sometimes. He said he was born in Chicago and other times he said he was born in San Francisco. And his books were published in... German in Germany in the 1920s, the 1930s, until uh, Hitler came to power and they were censored and they were burned. They were uh, published in uh, English in the United States in, in the 1930s, and then there was a revival of B. Traven in the 60s and the 70s. And I noticed that I noticed these books. I mean, one of the things that, that writers about literature like to do is to uh, discover or rediscover an author who's been lost for a long time. So one of my primary motives about writing about Traven was to introduce this sort of lost, largely unknown writer to uh, a, a whole new generation of uh of Americans who, who who were coming of age in in the 60s and, and and 70s of say you know young people who would have been interested in Mexico who traveled to Mexico who were interested in the lives of 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 Indians so I did write about Traven for a magazine in New York I sent it to Traven's widow who was still alive in Mexico City. And she said, well, why don't you come to Mexico and write a book about my husband? So I said, yes. I got an advance from a publisher. I went there. I had a place to live, but I uh, was spending a lot of my time in Traven's home in Mexico City, in the heart of, of Mexico City. And he lived there with Rosa Elena Lujan, and the, the house was um, like a museum. And so it's about Traven, his work, my involvement and engagement with Traven's work. And then also it's about uh, uh, Rosa Elena Lujan, who's a very fascinating woman, and her family, and Tra some of Traven's friends who were still alive. and in Mexico City and, and about the Mexico that I found uh, in when I was there in 1975 and, and also the, the Mexico that Traven knew in, uh, in the 1920s when he, when he got there and when it, this was still, uh, it was the tail end of the Mexican Revolution that had been going on for a decade and a lot of cultural ferment of artists like uh, Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera and an interest in, in uh, archaeology and anthropology and a lot of ferment and, and, and uh, Traven was involved in all this although he never told anybody that he was B. Traven. B. Traven was the name he used for his books. He sent them to Germany the people that he met uh, in his daily life in Mexico City, he said that his name was, he said he was Hal Croves and he was an American. And so he kept these two parts of his life like really separate from one another. And he was very secretive and very mysterious fellow. And I think that I've been, for a lot of my life, I've been drawn to people who are secretive and mysterious, wanting to know, well, what? You know why? Why are they serious? Why? Uh, why are they mysterious? What's? 
What is the mystery about their mysteriousness? I don't know whether I should give away the ending of, uh, of my search for Beach Raven, but it's, it, it is about, um, it's a book about mystery itself. You know, why are we drawn to mysteries? Not, not just me as an individual, but uh, as, as, a, as a culture or the cultures of the world. What, what is it about? mysteries that we find very compelling and, and that we're drawn to and I think that they do the mystery whether it's a murder mystery or uh, something sort of the mysteries of the universe that they're connected to some deep-seated like spiritual need or desire that, that, that people have and, and I, one of the things that I suggest is that maybe it, maybe for a lot of for in a lot of places in life it's it, it's more satisfying to leave the mystery unanswered than to have absolute or to claim to have absolute certainty and to say well these are the facts because in a lot of cases we don't we don't we don't we're never going to know what actually happened we know the stories that people told and there's or, or the or the different kind of stories that people told but we're not going to know ex we don't know exactly when B. Traven got to Mexico, or who his first friends were, or why did he decide to take the name Beach Raven. Uh, I'm, I mean, there are other people who have been attracted or drawn to Traven and his mystery, and they've tried to resolve the issue, and they haven't, they haven't answered the question. So some things are, are just going to remain mysterious, and that's okay to, uh, I mean, for some people it might produce sort of anxiety the unknown produces anxiety for some people maybe for all of us at some point or another but i think it's useful to be able to live with the unknown and to live with anxieties